Go easy on match. We vote first. You two decide. Um. <coughs> Who's got the best 51? Copper. Yeah, copper. <laughs> that one's on fire. I do. I bet it's on the bar. Hit the bar, man. What's that? 41? Yeah. 41? Okay. Oh, there you go. That's my case. That's the question, mate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I was in it, yeah. No, we <laughs> Off the record, 41 and 15, I think. 41 and 15. Scores <laughs> 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 and Okay, good afternoon everyone and welcome to Blankenheim for this media conference with Captain Harry Kane. Um, as ever, if we can keep questions to a minimum of three per person so we can get around as many as you as possible and we will have a short section embargoed um, at the end. So, Rob Dorsett, do you want to get us underway first? Hi Harry, good to see you. Um, look, England are on the verge of, of qualifying. Um, unbeaten so far, I think by your own admission, not firing on all cylinders quite yet. How important do you think it is to, to not only win this game against Slovenia, but, but get a big performance in to kind of build some momentum going into the, the knockouts? Yeah, I, th I think momentum is the right word. I think, um, you know, if before the tournament, if you would have said, you know, where we are now, you'd pretty much be qualified after two games, you know, we would have took it for sure. But I think, uh, yeah, that we can be honest with ourselves that we haven't played the way we've wanted to play. I think the good sign is that we've still picked up results uh, whilst doing that. Uh, but yeah, I think Tuesday is important just for the feeling of the feeling of the group. Of course, um, we want to finish top as well and just kind of take that momentum into the knockout stages. So um, yeah, and just you know, just for more uh, all round, just to you know, have a better feeling coming off the pitch and um, yeah, hopefully take that for the rest of the, the tournament. The calmness amongst you guys is very very obvious. Um, I mean, you've been there and seen it and done it all in, in major tournaments. Um, but I think there's a feeling amongst us guys in the media and maybe amongst the fans that there are more problems to solve maybe than we've seen in other tournaments under Gareth. Um, what do you make of that yourself? Do you think there have been more issues coming into the tournament and maybe more that you're still trying to work out? Uh, well, I think, yeah, maybe leading up into the tournament, there was, you know, situations, especially with probably fitness towards the back end of the season for quite a lot of players. And, um, you know, even in the selection that the, the manager had to choose between players who were uh, injured and not quite fit. So, um, yeah, maybe leading up, there's been a bit of a difference, I think. Um, yeah, in the in the past two tournaments, especially, you know, we've been on the, the same amount of points, the same kind of we won the first, we drew the second. But, um, yeah, I don't think we, we played well in the Denmark game I think we we dropped below what we know we can but um, yeah overall I think you know we are calm we have been here before we've got a lot of experience you know um, so it's it's not a time to panic of course but it's a time to obviously try and improve and I think um, yeah for me I think always in these tournaments especially these early stages it's almost you know you know I love my other sports it's almost like a boxer in the first couple of rounds just seeing where everyone's at seeing how you feel or a golfer in a major tournament, just kind of, okay, it's the first round, you know, don't play yourself out of the tournament, just be calm. And, and that's kind of where, I think, where we're at. You know, we're, we're looking where we can improve, and of course we know we can improve, but it's not a time to panic and think we need to change everything and change loads of stuff. We need to just need to, you know, a few fine details that I think will help us. We've talked a lot about your fitness. <laughs> yeah. How, how fit are you at the moment? And the, the crucial question for me, I think, is do you feel you're able to play in all of these games out here with England at the level you would want to be able to? Yeah, I do. I think, um, 
Yeah, I spoke before the tournament and of course we said about the preparation leading up to it, I thought was was pretty good for me personally. Um, and even the games in the tournament, you know, the first game, I felt as fit as uh, I have all season. And uh, of course, I know I come off in the second game, but that was down to the manager wanting to, to see different and uh, maybe freshen up the the, the front the front players especially. So uh, from my point of view, I'm fit. I'm, you know, getting better and better each game and fitter each game. And I spoke in previous tournaments about the same thing, about, you know, trying to make sure you're coming into your peak towards the, the most important part of the tournament, which is the knockout. So uh, as always, time will tell you, you know, if, if we get knocked out, then of course there'll be uh, a lot of questions asked. But I think, you know, uh, from my point of view, it's important that uh, going into this knockout stage, you're feeling 100% and, and, I, and I feel I'm there. Hi, Harry. Hi. Uh, what's the talk been like among the players after, after the first two games and what have you been working on uh, since the Denmark match? Yeah, the talk's been pretty much kind of what we spoke about, you know, just to be calm. Yeah, we're in a good place, even though we, we know we haven't quite reached the levels that we can. But um, yeah, it's been pretty much how it always is. You know, the lads get on very well. We've we had a bit of time with the families, which is great. It's always that stage of the tournament where, you know, you just start to miss your families a little bit and miss the kids. So it was, it was great to see them uh, the day after the game. Um, yeah, we, we've been training, trained yesterday, trained today, obviously on on the stuff, preparing for the game on on Tuesday. Um, and yeah, like I just said, just touching on the fine details and uh, the things that we feel like we can improve and watching back the games, we know there's areas that I think will really help us. There's been lots of uh, talk after the game, as, as you can imagine, but have you seen or or heard any of the criticism about your your own performance? And if you have, what have you made of it? Yeah, I mean, I try and stay off it as much as possible. I think it's almost impossible not to see uh, some some stuff nowadays with all the, the different platforms. But um, yeah, I think me as, as a player, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion and I know when major to major tournament football's on it's going to be it's going to be even heightened and you know every uh, performance is going to be scrutinized and um yeah if I'm honest with myself have I played the best that that I know I can no but you know I didn't score in the group stage in the world cup I didn't score in the group stage in the euros um so from my point of view uh it's a bonus to be one go ahead uh but yeah you know I'd always judge myself first and of course I know I can play better as I know you know a lot of the players think the same in the team that we can all play a, a little bit better um, and yeah and that's what I do you know I don't panic I don't get like you know too high or too low I'll keep doing what I, I do and um, yeah just go on to the next one and after the Denmark match uh, Gareth Southgate said that the team aren't able to press how, how they'd like because of the physical condition what's that like for you to deal with is it frustrating are you feeling a big difference when you're out there no I just think uh, I think both games playing against the the back three just maybe caused us a little bit of confusion on uh, confusion on the pitch you know we prepared for for the game but then um, yeah I just think there was certain things where we couldn't quite get the pressure that we wanted and we weren't uh, 100% sure on uh, of when to go and and, uh, and it's hard and when you're playing against good teams sometimes when the momentum goes against you you struggle to kind of get it back and then I don't think we were great with the ball which then led to you know feeling like you're just running and constantly running and then um, so it was tough to kind of turn that momentum around so um, yeah I think in the next game it'll maybe pose a different threat because of the formation uh, it's more likely going to be different from uh, Slovenia so um, yeah hopefully we can uh, show a bit more energy and a bit more um, yeah enthusiasm especially without the ball and I think that will help us with the ball as well. Harry hi in, in 28 of your Bundesliga 32 games that you played this season you played all 90 minutes nine of your 12 Champions League games you played all 90 minutes is there any concern about that catching up and are you always happy to finish games is that in your nature yeah I think so I'm always someone who's you know always put as much as I can into the game and you know a lot of my career I played the, the full 90 minutes um but as always, the decision's always with the, the manager. You know, I'll give everything I have for however long I play. And if it's 70 minutes, if it's 90 minutes, if it's extra time, you know, I physically feel more than capable of doing any of that. I've done that my whole career. Like you just said there, I've done that for pretty much the, the, the whole season as well. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling fit. I know sometimes when... You know, in my experience, when I've had you know bad games or games not up to the standard, there's always it's always something to look for and, and find a reason why. But sometimes it's just that's the game. You know, it's 
one or two games if this was in a league season no one's really talking about it because it's in you know a, a small heightened um, environment of course there's, there's more chatter so uh, the important thing is that you know from, from me personally I feel fit I feel ready and uh, I'll play as long as the manager wants me to play is, is it a different challenge when you're having to press against three at the back? I think it poses a different challenge uh, just tactically uh, on who's pressing what player and uh, I think in both games, you know, uh, they dropped midfielders into that kind of back three as well. And it was kind of, yeah, it was just that who goes at, at what moment. And uh, and I just think we didn't quite have, um, yeah, the right solutions at the time. And uh, and I think that's all part of improving, you know, there's more likely a chance we're going to come up against that formation again. And I think that's where it's really important to go away and, and look at the, the images, look at the video, see where where we can improve for, for next time. Um and yeah, and like I said, I think Tuesday will be a little bit different just from a tactically point of view anyway. But um, yeah, hopefully we can just bring a bit more more energy. And, you know, I know that's what you know, the crowd love and the fans love to get them off their seat. And, and we're more than capable of doing that. Thanks. Go Faye next. Hi, Harry. Hi. You're okay. Um, there have been a couple of reports around that you, you called a player summit on Friday morning after the game. Can you confirm if that's the case and, and what was the purpose of it? No, that didn't happen. So uh, I'm not sure where that's come from. I think, uh, again, probably just you know, people trying to maybe create something out of nothing really. The day after the game was um, yeah, just a small debrief that we always do from the manager. And then uh, it was just a family day. We had, we had seven hours with the family, which I'm not sure all the lads were, were quite happy about after a few hours. It was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was, it was pretty hectic, to be fair. So uh, we might cut that down in the, in the future. But no, that's what it was. And I think it was an important day just to kind of switch the minds off. You know, we'd, we've done well in the tournament so far, four points after two games. But... Uh, yeah, in, in this sort of environment, you need a chance just to switch off, and, and that's what that day was for. You talked about your your fitness, but are you having to play a slightly different game at the moment as well? Wayne Rooney wrote in in the Times the other day that actually, uh, perhaps the form from you in the past couple of games isn't necessarily your fault. You're just not getting the service in. Are you having because of the adjustments that Gareth Southgate's had to make? Are you having to adjust your game as well? Well, I think I always talk about, you know, from for me personally, as you know, I like some games I'll stay high, some some games I'll drop in. I think, uh, yeah, just as a team, we're, you know, just finding that uh, fluid nature. We're just, uh, that we haven't quite clicked right in the, in the first two games, if we're being honest. But, you know, we're all, you know, at the very top of our game. We're all at a high level. And I think just, you know, as as we train more, as we play more, that should only progress and, and get better. So, um, yeah, as always, you know, I'll try and adapt to the game situation and how the other team play and, and what suits me, uh, what suits uh, my role, I guess, as the, as the number nine. But, uh, yeah, I think most importantly, you know, there's been a lot of talk without the ball, but I think with the ball, we just need to be better. We need to keep it better. We need to to play a little bit higher when we're kind of in those areas building up. We need to, um, yeah, get in between the lines a little bit more and uh, and, and that will come. And, and like I said, time will tell, of course, we have to go out there and prove it in the, in the matches and, and hopefully we can do that on Tuesday. Just finally, what's the message to, to the fans, particularly the ones out here in, in Germany? There were boos after, after that Denmark performance. Are you urging them to be patient, calm? What, what's your message to them? Yeah, I think calm is, is the most important one. You know, a lot of us have been here and, and done that and we've given England fans, you know, some fantastic times. And, you know, I know 99% of the fans are you know, fully behind us and fully with us. But as always, you know, during the tournament, just to support us as they always do, and, and I know they will. Um, and then after the tournament, you can judge us. You know, I always say... Um, when it's finished, there will be people judging us. You know, we've come, we've had some good tournaments. We've had some tournaments where, you know, we've just fallen short. But, um, yeah, during it, you know, it's, it's down to us as players, as coaching staff, as uh, the whole environment to, to get it right and find where we can improve. And, of course, people will have their opinions and that's no problem. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be us who, who makes the decisions and, and to try and find the solution. Thanks. We have David and then Kieran next. Hi, Eric. David from Italy here. Um, you said yourself that you guys haven't played at the level you wanted to. Why do you think that happened? Yeah, I think I touched on it a little bit. I just think, um, yeah, we've just maybe definitely, well, we've definitely been a bit loose with the ball compared to how we've been in, in recent years. And, and then that's caused, you know, um, 
yeah, a lot of time, probably more time than what we used to spent without the ball. And, and like I touched on there, I don't think we've quite got the, the pressure right. And, and also the intensity, right? We haven't um, pressed with enough, you know, energy, enthusiasm, um, which will need to change going, going forward. So, um, yeah, that's down, like I said, that's down to us now to, to find a solution. It's not a time to panic and feel like we need to change, you know, everything that we've built over all these years. It's just... Um, like I touched on in, in all sports in all different things you find uh, what's working what needs improving uh, and then yeah you try and implement that into, into the next game plan You've been to major tournaments before maybe the difference this time is that you have massive expectations on you that probably you guys didn't have in, uh, in the previous tournaments uh, how do you see expectations and the way people expect you to play and to perform? Yeah, I think that's part, part and parcel of, you know, what we created as a squad, to be honest. You know, um, the bottom line is we're trying to achieve something as an England team that we've never achieved in, in our history. So it's very tough. And, and that is European football. That's playing in these championships is, is difficult. So, um, yeah, we've come close and we've been the closest in, in recent history. So um, we know how to to get it done but we also know there's a lot of hard work along the way you're playing against a lot of good teams and it's going to be difficult and there's times where you're going to have to grind you're going to have to defend like we've defended really well in, in the two games I know a lot of people have been talking about what we haven't done well but what we have done well is you know defend the box well uh, block crosses block shots and um, that's important that's an important part of winning games as well so we're going to need all of it um, of course, to improve the parts I spoke about. But if we can do that, then yeah, step by step, I think we have a, we have a good chance. And finally, for me, you said one goal for you is a, a plus compared to previous tournaments. Um, but overall, about your performance, how do you think you have performed so far? Yeah, I touched on earlier. Um, not as good as I'd wanted to perform, for sure. But um, yeah, that's happened at various stages in, in my career for, for club and for country. Um, yeah, and I think... Always, you know, it's never about the individual in, in a team sport. It's always about, okay, what can we all do to, to try and improve and, and get better? And I think that's where we're at. Of course, everyone looks at themselves first. After every game, everyone, every player is watching their, their clips to see what they've done well, what they didn't do well. And that's always the mindset we've had. And then, you know, we speak as a, as a group and as we do with the debriefs and look into the next game. And it's like, okay, how can we, how can we improve? And, and that's no different for me. Can we go Kieran here and then yourself? Uh, hi, Harry. Um, we're not used to seeing you come off in a situation where England need to, to score a goal so on, in the game against Denmark when you saw your number go up how did how did you feel in that moment and does that motivate you more to sort of show the real Harry Kane in, in the coming game yeah well look, it's not the, f the first time it's happened either it happened in the, the Scotland game in, in the last Euros when, when it was nil-nil so um, yeah like I always say that the manager will make the best decisions for what he feels in that moment for, for the team as a player as a, the, the captain um, you have to, to accept that whether you agree with that or not you know in that moment he felt like the team needed fresh legs in the attacking areas and so be it you know now my job is to support the team from, from the bench and to try and uh, help as much as possible in, in uh, in those moments so um, of course I'm a player who wants to play every minute and because um, I always feel like it's a chance to, to score in, in the last minute but also you know the England manager's got a tough job we've got a lot of great players who you know he has to make decisions for and uh, I'd always support that You mentioned earlier that you can sometimes play higher and sometimes come, come deeper in the first game in particular especially in the first half it seemed like you were playing higher was that a particular tactical instruction or something you just kind of saw in the game yeah that's probably just what more what I saw in the game I think uh, especially in that first half of that Serbia game you know uh, Jude especially uh, Phil were kind of getting into those number 10 areas and, and causing them quite a lot of problems especially the first half hour of that game so uh, I felt like because they wanted to defend man for man if I could you know stretch them a little bit higher and, and stay a little bit higher that space will be bigger for them um yeah, but as always, you know, with me personally, I've had it for sure over the, the last four or five years. If I stay too high and I don't touch the ball, I should drop deep and be involved. And if I drop deep and get involved, I should be in the box to, to score. So that's, yeah, that's part and parcel of being who I am and, and being uh, a number nine who likes to do, to, to do both roles. But um, yeah, overall, each game, you know, we talk about it as a team and that's how the manager wants, wants to play. And then also... Uh, it comes down to your instincts on the pitch as well. 
just finally for me, four points might get you through as it is, but how important is it to win the group and uh, potentially avoid a clash with Germany in the last 16? Yeah, we definitely want to win the group. Uh, I don't think it's just to, to avoid anyone. Of course, you know, Germany have had a fantastic start to the tournament, but I think it's more just, uh, as, we, as we touched on earlier, the momentum that it will give us going into, into the knockout uh, stages. Um, of course, people expected us to finish top. We expect to finish top in the position we're in now, especially. Um, but yeah, if we don't, it's, you know, it's not a panic, as we always say. But um, yeah, I think we do want to go out there Tuesday and, and put a marker down and um, yeah, hopefully take that for the rest of the tournament. Hello, Harry. Um, I'm Jonas from the uh, local uh, German broadcast uh, channel, M. Der Jump, so uh, excuse my bad English. Um, we are very glad to have uh, high-quality football here in Thuringia uh, during the uh, Euro uh, 2024, because normally we have in uh, Thuringia not even professional football. Here's uh, nothing in, <laughs> in, that, uh, in, that, um, uh, in that thing. And uh, we are very glad to have you here. Do you enjoy it? Uh, do you enjoy the surrounding, the landscape? And if yes, uh, could you imagine to move here one day? Do you want to stay. Um, we have a seventh division team, you may have heard of it, SG Lauscher Neuhaus. Um, they had a contract offer for you. You get um, free Thüringer Rostbrat, worst all you can eat, uh, free drinks in every bar and uh, Mindestlohn. And you would have much more time for the national team. So if you want, I have your jersey here. Um, you can take it. Do you want it? It's very well prepared. I'll have, to talk to, <laughs> I'll have to talk to my agent and see uh, what we can do. But uh, you have good golf courses. I mean, the golf course we're standing on is fantastic. So, uh, yeah, it's not a, bad, uh, not a bad plus. But, no, it's been great. You know, the reception I've had, not just here, but in the whole of Germany, has been incredible. I think, um, you know, since I moved to Bayern Munich, I've uh, added a lot of supporters to, to me. And, you know... Um, Yeah, every hotel we've been to so far and uh, just around the stadiums, everything to support uh, has been amazing. So, you know, I, I just want to say thank you for, for that. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's on my mind to move here one day, but uh, no, we appreciate, you know, uh, yeah, you guys hosting us. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a pleasure for us, uh, like I said, and um, maybe you can you can sign the jersey later. So we uh, you're the first real footballer to enter uh, Turingia, and it's uh, great for us. Thank oh, you. No problem. Thanks. No worries. Okay, we'll go Jerry, Ewan, and then we'll finish here with Eric. Thank Hi, you. Harry. Good luck for right. uh, for the match. Thank you. Um, you said a lot. Don't panic. Has been a message that's come across. Um, there's a lot of young players in the squad who haven't got the experience you've got. Have you, is this something that you personally as captain, is that the message you're personally giving it to, to them? Yeah, I think so. I think it's part of the environment that we set as well. I think, um, like I touched on, everyone gets on really well. Everyone's always talking to each other, whether that's, you know, playing darts or playing Uno or just with each other on the coach or whatever it may be. We have a good environment where, you know, everyone talks uh, honestly and openly and, um Yeah, I think whenever, you know, you're talking in meetings or the manager's talking or Steve's talking, you know, there's always good messages and messages that we've had throughout the years. And, uh, and, and that's a big one, you know, is the reality of where we are. And that's four points after two games, which is, you know, a decent start. And then there's obviously knowing that we can improve and get better. And um, yeah, I think for the, the newer players or the younger players, um, that's just kind of the environment they're in. And I think they, uh, they catch on to that pretty quick. Excellent. In terms of um, seven hours with the family, what what do you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean the hotel is fantastic. Uh, you know, full credit to the to the, the guys and girls and from the FA of putting everything on. And um, yeah, we had a bit of everything in there. You know, we got kind of the golf simulator, the, the football. We had you know um, burger trucks. We had bouncy castles. Everything. You know, it was. Uh, it was just a really good day and it was a good chance for you know, some of the families who ain't really met or for the players to meet some of the, uh, the other players' kids, etc. because you hear about them, but obviously you don't always get to, to meet them. So, um, yeah, I think we've done a really good job at that uh, in not just this tournament, but other tournaments as well. Just, um, yeah, making sure you have time to switch off and, and be with them because they're you know, a huge part. And of course, you, you, you do miss them during uh, long spells away. So, um, Yeah, it was a fun day, just maybe a little bit too long. And finally, um, I don't know if you heard his podcast, but uh, Gary Lineker had a, uh, a word to describe England's performance um, in his podcast. Uh, do you think it's helpful for somebody like him to describe it as shit on the eve of such a big game, particularly when you're top of the group with four points? And do you think maybe you should stick to flogging crisps? 
Uh, look, I think it's always, you know, I'd never want to be you know, disrespectful to any player, especially, you know, a player who's worn the shirt and knows what it's like to, to play for England. But um, of course, I think what maybe ex-players or ex-players who are pundits now have got to realise is that the it's very hard not to listen to it now, especially for some players who are not used to it or some players who are new to, to the environment. So, um, yeah, I always feel like they have a, a responsibility. I know they've got to be honest and give their opinion, but also their responsibility of being an ex-player, an ex-England player that a lot of players looked up to, that, you know, uh, people do care about what they say and people do, do listen to them. So, um, like I touched on, everyone's got their opinion, but the bottom line is, uh, we haven't won nothing as a nation for a long, long time. And, you know, a lot of these players were, were part of that as well and they know how tough it is. So it's not digging anyone out, but it's just the reality that, you know, they do know that it's tough to, to play in these major tournaments and tough to, to play for England. But yeah, look, I'd never disrespect any ex-player. Uh, all I'd say is just, you know, remember what it was like to, to wear the shirt and uh, that their words are listened to and, and you know, it's, some of the lads or I don't know how many of the lads but you know you do hear it and uh, the, we all want to win a major tournament I'm sure they want us to win a major tournament and um, yeah being as helpful as they can and, and building the lads up with confidence would be a, a much better way of, of going about it Thanks very much Good luck Thanks Jerry A few quick ones on Ewan and then we'll finish with Eric from Build just to your left hand side there Hi Harry Hi um, I just wanted to ask a bit more on that triple subs I know you covered that already but um did that show a different side to Gareth maybe that we haven't seen before to make such a sort of strong change at that point in the match? Well, I don't know. I think, like I touched on there, I remember in the Euros, he'd done a similar thing against Scotland. I'd come off in the first game against Croatia in, in the Euros as well. So I don't think it's anything new. I think it's something that, you know, the manager will make the right decision for the team. And I think he's proven that... Um, yeah, over his whole time uh, as, an, as, as the England manager. So, um, yeah, sometimes, you know, you can read into things a little bit too much. Uh, there's players who are training really well. There's players who are, you know, itching to get on the pitch. And that's part and parcel of major tournament football. There's going to be players, some players that don't play. There's going to be some players that come on. And, you know, the team that starts the first game is not, uh, not always the team that ends up starting the games later on in, in the competition. So, um yeah, like I said, I wouldn't read too much into it. It might happen again, it might not. The manager, each game is different. He, him and Steve uh, and the staff will just try and make the best decisions in, in those moments. I know you've talked a bit about dropping deep versus staying further up, but what's it been like? Your, your, how's your role changed with having guys like Saka, Bellingham, Foden, Trent behind you? Does that sort of change your, your role, having that level of talent? Um... I'm not too sure. I think, obviously, I played with those players f for quite a long time now with, with England, obviously. Um, yeah, I feel like I've got a good relationship with, with all of those players. Um, we just probably haven't, you know, done well enough in the two games to, to show it yet. But I think, you know, especially in, in past tournaments, in, in qualifying, we've shown what we can do when we're, um, yeah, all on, the, all on the same page. But, um, but again, it's a, it's a game of football. You're not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to get it right. You're not always going to, you know, um, be switched on in every moment of every game. But uh, I think with, with all of the players and all of us, you know, we try and work on it. We try and train on it. We try and see, okay, he's doing this. Can, I, can this help him? And, and we all try and help each other. And, uh, yeah, we're all fantastic players so it's just about you know how can we uh yeah get the best out of everyone and i think that's what we all try and do cheers, cheers. Uh, and a fresh eric nice hey harry um, eric peters build germany so how important is it for you to feel supported by your family during the euros especially when there is a lot of criticism yeah i think family and, and friends uh you know really important just to uh, um, yeah, of course they always support you. They always they always back you. But um, yeah, they're a big part of your life. Of course, you during a normal season you get to to go home. You see them every day, and uh, of course you go away for away games. But uh, yeah, it's never normally longer than a, a couple of days that you don't see them for. And tournament football is different. You know, you have to spend a lot of time uh, away from them, which is not easy, especially with young kids. A lot of the lads have got young kids, and and you miss them. But um, you know, that's a sacrifice we make, and uh, you make to to play in these tournaments. And uh, yeah, I think you try and keep in touch as much as possible. I always talk about you know making sure you have people to talk to and family are a big part of that and uh, yeah I mean I'm lucky enough to have great people around me and, and they're always there to support me. Then a question um, 
regarding your club Bayern Munich. Um, so how do you see the signing of Vincent Kompany as your new manager? And has there been any contact so far? Yeah, so he phoned me, um, you know, after it got announced and uh, yeah, just more to catch up and introduce himself. Obviously, before the tournament, um, he knows I'm focused on England and focused on uh, the Euros. But uh, yeah, he just wanted to reach out and kind of uh, yeah, ask my opinion on kind of last season and how I've felt since I've been here. And uh, yeah, he just gave me a bit of background on, you know, how what he liked to do and how he likes to play. And Uh, yeah, it was only a short 10 minute conversation, but it's more just an introduction. So, uh, yeah, I mean, of course, at the moment I'm focused on England, but I'm sure once I'm back at Bayern, it'll be, uh, you know, great to, to start the preseason and, and get some new ideas from him and see how he wants to play and see uh, his vision for the season ahead. And uh, as always, I'm always learning from different coaches, different managers, and I'm sure I will from, from him as well. Thanks, Eric. Okay, that concludes the live section. We'll now move on to a short section embargo to 10.30. We'll have to keep this about five minutes, so let's be sharp. Start with Matt Law, if you want to grab the... Thanks. Hi, Harry. Um, Hi. You've spoken really well about the, the team and, and yourself in that. I just wanted on Gareth. I mean, obviously, after the Denmark game, he gets a load of criticism. He's used to that. And generally, he seems to get a lot of criticism, whatever he does, quite frankly, at the moment. You've, you've worked for some of the very best club managers. Can you give us an appreciation of how good Gareth is and maybe whether you think he's sort of underestimated outside the England bubble because, like I say, he seems to get it in the neck, whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough of, of Gareth and, you know, what he's done uh, for the team and, and for this nation in terms of, you know, um, where we were and where we are now as a national team is completely different. I think he's... Uh, brilliant on the details, uh, going, making sure that kind of there's no stone unturned and that we know uh, everyone knows what they're, they're going to be doing going into games. Um, just as a person and, you know, giving us the freedom to, to be ourselves and whether that's on the pitch or off the pitch, just to, to feel comfortable doing that. So uh, I think being an England manager is you know, a really difficult job. That's, that's the bottom line. He knows that and, and we all know that. And there's always going to be people who... Uh, maybe criticize him or or doubt him but you know I think his record speaks for itself he's um, been extremely successful with us um, but like all of us and like I know he wants to we want to take that next step and win it and we're all really determined to do that so um, he will do what's best for for the nation he will make the decision what's best for for the team um, and all I'd say is just to you know get behind him support him uh, as the players do and just to be clear so in your view, in all the players' view, he is the best man for the job. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, Harry, that you've, you've made a few references to previous tournaments. When things aren't going brilliantly, do you, do you sort of reach back a little bit and use your what, what's gone on previously to sort of inspire you moving forward? I think, I think so, yeah. I think that's part of having the experience and... Uh, You know, using that to your advantage, it'd be silly just to forget all those past experiences and past tournaments because they can be really helpful and really useful. And uh, and that's what I try and do. And I think a lot of the players who have been here and been here for a long time do do the same. And and you have the responsibility to you know try and share that with with the other players. Um, but yeah, you know, major tournaments are tough. Like I touched on, there's always going to be ups and downs. It's never a, just a a straight line to the top. We're not in you know our experience, and um, yeah, we know how much it took to get close in the last Euros. We, we know how, like I said, the ups and downs, the group stage, and, and the bottom line is what really matters is, you know, where you where you finish in the tournament. So no one's going to remember, you know, the, the one all draw against Denmark if we go all the way and, and win it. And that's just the reality. So, uh, yeah, it's just understanding that, you know, don't get, get too carried away if you're, you know, winning games 3-0 and don't get too down if you're, you know, playing as we've played so far in the tournament. It's just about pushing on and um, yeah, finding a way to, to make sure we get to the knockout stage and then once we're there is knockout football is, is ours to, to take Harry you did start the tournament as pre-tournament favourites didn't you is, is there anything that's happened in the last you know in the first two games sort of shaken that belief do you still believe that you can you can win it as a group because the squad is so strong isn't it yeah we absolutely absolutely believe we can win it I don't think um Yeah, it's, it's always a hard one, you know. You could win the first two games, 3-0, 3-0. You could get carried away. Everyone's saying you're going to win it. And then, you know, you come up against a bit of adversity in the first knockout game and all of a sudden you're out. So I, I don't think it's a bad thing that 
you know, you go through a bit of a tough time to begin with because now it, you know, it widens the focus. It, it makes you realise that, you know, you are, you can be, you know, a bad game away from being out of the tournament. And, um, yeah, and I feel like we've coped with that well in, in past tournaments. So, uh, yeah, look, it, there's always a different journey for different teams. I think from our point of view, whether we are classed as favourites or not, we ever believe that, that we can win it. And um, it's down to us to go out there and, and try and achieve that. OK, we've got five and then we're finished. I don't care. Uh, Harry, um, you mentioned before about the, the criticism from ex-players in, 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 on television, etc. Um, have, have, you, you said you know, it's possible that young players could hear that and be, you know, it could affect them. Is, is that the case? Do you, have, have, have younger players mentioned it? Has it been discussed in the group? No, no, and, no, they are being no, no one's them? mentioned it, but, you know, um, yeah, we live in a world where you know, on your phone now you, everything pops up or you, it's hard to really... Uh, switch off from everything but um, yeah as always like I, I keep saying yeah, I'm not people are going to have their opinions I'm not saying to not talk about it or the pundits to, to say this could be better that could be better that's part of football that's part of being a fan that's part of the why we love the game but um, yeah all I'd probably say is just to trust us you know we, we've been here we've done it a lot of us have uh, been in these moments before so just to trust us and you know, uh, as much as possible, get behind us, and, and that'd only give us confidence and uh, yeah, help us to achieve what we want to achieve, and that's to, to be successful. Peachy, yeah. and then Dan. Yeah. Um, hi, Harry. I just wanted to obviously the leadership group. Jude Bellingham's joined it. And um, what does the leadership do when the when there is negativity, when there are there is a need to kick on, and, and what's he brought to that uh, that group? Yeah, I think um, yeah, kind of what I touched on earlier. I don't think there's like a, you know like I said, there wasn't a crisis meeting or a meeting where it's like, um, what we're going to do or it's, it was, it's not like that. I think leaders lead in different ways. That might be, you know, just talking to different people in the group. You know, some people might feel more comfortable talking to me or what some might be more comfortable talking to Jude and, um, and yeah, there's loads of different players like that in, in the squad. So, uh, Jude's obviously still very young, but I think he's, you know, really mature for his age and, uh, he's got some great experiences in football already. So people, you know, do look up to him and, uh, that's a responsibility that he's taken on, uh, really well. So, um, yeah, I guess it could just be, you know, it could be as simple as just a coffee with someone just talking about maybe not even England, just talking about family or talking about, you know, him at Real Madrid or me at Bayern Munich. It could just be anything just to switch your mind off and, and feel comfortable and feel at ease. And, uh, and then in terms of, you know, in the meetings, in the debriefs, in the games, it's just having an opinion of, you know, what you felt on the pitch, how it felt out there, what can we do, what can, what do you think will help to, to be better next time? Um, and I think, yeah, in this team, you know, more and more, uh, players are starting to feel comfortable talking, uh, in those environments to, to help the team. Harry, there's a sort of perception that the balance of the team wasn't right against Denmark. I mean, you've always thrived when you've got kind of quick runners beyond you, like Son or Sané or I guess Rashford and Sterling for England. And now it feels like you and Jude and Phil all want to kind of pop up in the number 10 spot. I mean, can that work, do you think? Or are there too many players trying to do the same thing in this team? Um, I think I'd probably say from from all of us, maybe just a little bit more, you know, p positional discipline. Maybe is a, a word. Just uh, when we look when we look back at the games, there was times where you know we were a little bit too deep, and not just us as well. Like certain areas of the pitch where you know we had too many numbers kind of behind their their kind of press or their kind of block, uh, and it, and then we found it really hard to then progress up the pitch. So. Um, yeah, I think just like, like I said, I think as we play more of each other, especially in those positions, it will get better and, and we'll have more understanding. But um, yeah, just a, maybe a bit more discipline in all of our positional play. We all want to maybe get on the ball and make a difference, which is great. It's a, you know, we're all players who, who love getting it uh, in those positions. But um, yeah, also we need to be a threat going forward, which we haven't been, you know, compared to our usual self. So um, yeah, again, it's something that we all, you know, work on and, and see what areas we can improve but I, I don't think there's an issue with you know us free playing with each other for example I think you know the, the seasons that we all had speak for themselves and um, yeah there's no reason why we can't start ramping that up on the pitch and, and get into a level that we know we can and last two um, it's just about the pundits again ha have you in your capacity as captain reached out to anyone or would you and would you if it, if it continued because um, they, they all invite you on their programmes and want to do 
interviews with you? So, yeah, I mean, it's a tricky one because, of course, you know, I'm sure they would love to have my opinion and love to, but um, you know, as you know, when you're a player, you you're more focused on the team and more focused on the environment. Um, yeah, look, I, again, it's I'm not telling people not to do their job. It's, it's their job to to analyze the game and and analyze players and. You know, there's some games where, you know, I'll get stick. There's some games other players will get stick. But I just think, um, yeah, just when you've been there and done it, obviously maybe when I'm 40 or 50 and I'm, I might be on one of those pundits trying to dig players out, I, I hope I'm not. But, uh, yeah, it might change. But it's just, it is what it is. But I think from my point of view, just with the experience of, you know, players who have been there and been in the experience and maybe not played well in certain games and know it's tough to, to play for England. It's just like, okay, well, maybe take a step back and see see where you were and, and what it was like. And, and well, have it, you contacted anybody about that? No, 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 no. no. But, um, well, yeah, um, I mean, it depends on the, the situation, I guess. I don't think there's a need for, for it at the moment. Um, you know, I think, especially now, you know, with the podcast, with everything people are trying to, you know, promote their own channels and promote their own stuff. And sometimes, you know, as we know, the you know, the headline or the, the the phrase you want the most views is not always the you know the happiest phrase or the one that you know people love to see. The people like to discuss and debate. And um, so, yeah, people will do things out of their own gain as well to promote promote their own stuff. That's just life. That's that, that is what it is. But um, yeah, as always, like I say, just first of all, just try from our point of view, just to ignore it but then also you know try and back back the English players as much as possible we're doing as much as we can to make everyone proud you guys proud the fans proud the, the pundits proud and you know I know they'd love nothing more than we're all celebrating you know after the Euros together and um, that, that's hopefully what we can try and achieve just about Sammy then we're done thank you hi Harry um, hi you, you, you've spoken about some of the difficulties or the issues they need ironing out on, on the pitch. But I think you've only got sort of two or three training sessions between games. Can you speak about, is, is that a difficult, is there a difficulty in trying to ironing, ironing those out just because you've got limited time on the training field between, between each match? Yeah, I think that's where, you know, the meetings and the debriefs become even more important, you know, uh, because physically, uh, you know, there's not a lot of time in between games. You can't be pushing training for two hours and, and going again and again and again. So I think... Just from the men mental point of view, to when we're looking at the the clips and looking at the formations and looking at where we can improve, it's really important to to take that in, and that's a, a vital part of, of trying to improve during major tournament football. Uh, we still have enough time on the pitch. Like we we had a really good uh, couple sessions uh, yesterday and today, and we'll have our normal day before game session uh, tomorrow. And um, yeah, and then if there's any you know smaller meetings that we feel like we need or individuals need you know a bit more clarity on certain stuff that that availability is always there with the coaching staff as well so um but yeah I think during major to, to, major tournament football it's more the analysis that's really important to to take that in and really understand it because yeah there isn't loads of time to do uh, the work on the pitch cheers guys thanks for time cheers. thank you thank you Thanks, <laughs>